بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعزائي طلاب المرحلة الخامسة كلية الطب جامعة ميسان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته هذه محاضرة فيديوية في الجراحة التجميلية About the plastic surgeon What are the scopes of plastic surgeon? What are the fields that are covered by plastic surgeon? First of all, we need plastic surgery in the trauma, especially when there is soft tissue loss like skin, tendon, nerves, muscle, and injuries of the hand and lower limbs, and facial maxillary injuries and in bed. Also, it is important field of plastic surgery in cancer management, especially skin cancer, head and neck, breast, soft tissue sarcoma. All the tumors of these structures, there is implementation for plastic surgery in. Another field of plastic surgery is in congenital anomalies, especially clefts and craniofacial malformation, skin, giant navi, vascular malformation, urogenital malformation, hand and limb malformations. And other miscellaneous situations like Bell's palsy, facial palsy, bed sore, pressure sore, and in aesthetic surgery. And we will talk uh, later on about the in this lecture about aesthetic surgery. And also, the, there is a, a rule for plastic surgery is chest wall reconstruction. It is important in plastic surgery to do assessment and diagnostic planning. And assessment, first of all, in assessment, we have to do treatment plan. We have to draw a plan in our mind and management of that patient. For example, if he has wound, shall I do primary suturing? Shall I do uh, delayed primary suturing? or leave the patient healing by secondary intention or skin grafting or tissue expander. So there must be a, a treatment plan. Also, we should consider all available options for care with the whole of the patient needs. It is not just a plastic surgery need. He may need control of sepsis. He may need parenteral nutrition, improvement of his nutritional status. The initial assessment of the wound that we want to deal with in the plastic surgery, we have to look for the wound first for degree of contamination, for degree of the uh, contamination with adequate removal of devitalized tissue and foreign bodies. Also, we have to do assessment for the vital structure that needs reconstruction. Assessment of vital structures that need reconstruction. Further planning involves the definitive soft tissue cover of the wound and functional rehabilitation and psych psychosocial rehabilitation. What are the principles of plastic surgery? The main principle in plastic surgery first, we have to optimize the wound. And to do that, we need the breedment of the wound or resection of the dead tissue. Adequate debridement or resection of dead tissue. Also, one of the important principles of plastic surgery is wound or flap must have a good blood supply to heal. If we use uh, a flap for covering a wound, or we deal with a wound, we have to ensure there is a good blood supply. Also, another principle, third principle, is to place scars carefully in lines of election. Langer hands line, skin tension line. Also, we have to replace defect with similar tissue. Observe meticulous surgical technique. 
and we have to remember the donor site cost if we take from a site in the body a graft or a flab we have to remember that we have a new site we have to deal with it what are the methods of wound closure either by primary closure and we mean by, by primary closure it is the surgical closure of of a wound in one or more layers within hours of its occurrence most surgical incision and the traumatic laceration are closed primary second method is by delayed primary closure delayed primary closure is the surgical closure of a wound days to weeks later the granulation tissue is excised the edge of the wound are freshened and the wound is closed an example of this technique is the closure of fasciotomy incision Primary closure نسوي غلق للوند إذا شفنا الوند tidy incised clean edges نسوي له primary closure by suture delayed primary closure usually when there is contamination for the wound we delay the wound for a period maybe days weeks till it get clean after assessment then we refresh the end and we close it another method of Closure is healing by secondary intention. Wound heals with time through accumulation of a granulation tissue, usually with a frequent dressing change. Just we leave the wound to heal by itself, but we, but we don't leave the patient uh, as that. We have to follow up the patient with daily wound care, uh, removal of any devitalized tissue, uh, removal uh, of any necrotic tissue uh, and change of dressing and uh, with the cover of antibiotics another method of wound closure by skin grafting and we will talk later about skin grafting and by surgical flaps let us talk about now about principles of skin cover and the most important is skin graft what is the definition of a skin graft? It is a segment of epidermis and dermis that has been completely departed, cut from its blood supply and from its donor site and transferred into a recipient site where there is a skin loss. What are the types of skin graft? We have either split thickness graft called Hirsch graft or full thickness graft called Wolf graft. Split thickness skin graft. We, we do not talk all the skin. We talk, we take the epidermis and part of the dermis. While in full thickness skin graft, we take the derm, full dermis, uh, epidermis and full dermis. What are the steps in doing skin graft? First, separation by surgical knife called dermatome. There is a special knife that's take skin graft called dermatome second the recipient area should be surgically clear and has formed granulation tissue capable to regenerate due to adequate blood supply third after application of the graft the process of take take place which aims at the nutrition of the graft by imbibition of a plasm from wound bed this is in the first 48 hours then vascularization afterwards fourth step is healing of donor site depend on degree of thickness taken from the donor site graft survivor Pass in phases. Phase one from the 24 hour take from 20, uh, 24 hours to 48 hours, which involve plasmatic imbibition. Phase two uh, happen from second day to four days. It is a period of inosculation. Inosculation mean uh, there is a, a joining 
of the new blood vessels of the graft with the blood vessels of the bed of the wound there is uh, what we call like uh, a union between them phase three that happened between day five and day seven it is a period of revascularization revascularization the thinner the graft the faster is the take keep in your mind that bare, bo bare bone bare cartilage and bare tendon are all bad recipient sites for graft because they are poorly vascularized a flap is better applied in this situation Whenever we take a graft, we should consider the following point. First, whether we need the healing by primary or secondary intention. Second, color of the graft. Does it fit or near fit the recipient side? And whether the color is important in this one. For example, in the face, it is important the color match the, the recipient side. Third, presence of skin appendages, hair follicle, sweat gland, uh, sebaceous gland. All these you have to consider when we apply the graft, because there may be an area without hair, and you bring a skin containing hair. Third, you need the sensation or not sensation of the graft. Is it essential or not? Sensation here. Durability of the graft. The growth of the graft. All these we have to consider before we decide to take the graft. What are the differences between the split thickness skin graft and full thickness skin graft? Split thickness skin graft is we take the, de the epidermis and superficial part of dermis. While in full thickness skin graft, we take the epidermis and full thickness of dermis. Uh, about the indications, in split thickness skin graft, we, the indications for it in covering a large area of granulation tissue and in coverage after deep bare or malignant tumor resection. While in full thickness skin graft, it is indicated in facial wounds, palmar aspect of the hand and plantar aspect of the feet, site of a pressure on the sole of the foot. Regarding the donor sites, we take split, skin, uh, split thickness skin graft, usually from the trunk, thighs, upper arm, and forearm. While full thickness, usually we take it from both auricular skin, upper eyelid, supraclavicular region, and also from the medial aspect of the arm. Advantages of split thickness skin graft include early separation and application, increased take by the graft, can cover wide area, early detection of recurrence of malignancy, Donor site heals spontaneously. While the advantages of full thickness skin graft, direct closure of donor site, minimal contraction, unlike the split thickness, better sensation, cosmotically better resistant to trauma while this advantage of split thickness skin graft it is more liable to contraction more liable for pigmentation 